Putting text onto models is really common. Um, you see it everywhere in built environments. So shop stores will um, shop stores will have the shop name on the outside and a big sign. So you're going to want to do this quite often, especially if you're planning for business. Now, doing this in SketchUp is pretty easy. So here I am. I'm going to just go and make myself a wall, not to any scale at all. I'm just doing this. So. The tool to use is down here, and it is called the 3D Text Tool. So I'm going to enter some text. I'm going to say Manchester, because that's where we are. And we can choose different fonts and bits. So the alignment's there, the fonts are here. We can really play with this, but I like Harvetica. I like bold. I'm going to go with the default and click OK. So here we have. Um, some text floating around. Now we can place it on the face. So if we see here, I can place it on the top, or just by moving it, moving the cursor over the side, because now face. So I'm going to click there. So I've now placed text on a wall. Now if you think it's too small, all you need to do is go to the scale tool and you can make it bigger or smaller as you like. So that makes it nice and easy. If you want to move it, select it, and use the Move tool, and move it. And obviously, because you've already placed it on a wall, if you move it off, like I have here, it stays on the same axis, um, but you're in floating space. So I'm going to move that back onto there. So some other things you can do, if I then took the uh, Paint Bucket tool, and selected, say, like a brick, um, image, so well, your tone patterns, marks around bricks, and choose bricks and then just drop it. So I can colour the background in one colour, I can just go to uh, pick University of Manchester purple, and I can do the whole thing there. So that's kind of cool. Um, but say I want to have the front of the lettering one colour and the sides different colour, such as white, to make the purple really stand out well. What we've got to do is select the item, right click and explode. Because that text wasn't, um, it comes in as one item, but it's one item made out of small individual items. Those individual items are letters. So if I now look at this and select the M, it's just like any other block. We haven't got that boundary that you get with objects. So if I take the paint bucket tool and I'm going to go and select, um, you know, white, pure white. There we are. I can just drop it onto the sides or any other colour I like. I can just go for it and just paint bucketing as I go. Of course, I can select multiple. Um, select multiple surfaces as I go as I like, but that's just different ways of doing the same thing, frankly. So yeah, anyway, I can carry on doing this all I like, and you can see that that gives quite a nice effect. So different things I might want to do. If I don't want the text 3D, I want it 2D on the wall. Just take some more text again. Let's go Manchester, this time all in capitals. That's my Manchester. It's very embarrassing. Place. Okay, there I am. I'm going to scale it up, make it bigger again because just I want to. And there we have it. So Manchester's on there. Just like when we're trying to do cuts, select the whole thing, right click, intersect faces with model. So everything's cut. Select him, delete. Now you can't see this very clearly, but if you look very carefully, you've got the tracing of the letter. It's because I've got the um, colour in there. So if I take yellow now, I can actually colour in these letters just there. So I've now got 2D bits on the wall. Now, if you've got 2D bits on the wall, what happens next is you can do some cutting. So if you don't want to have 2D text on the wall and you want to cut all the way through, you can just take the push-pull command, go on this letter, there you are. Spin this around, click go until it says on face, and you just cut a hole all the way through. Do the same with the A. Spin it around, on face, with the N. Spin this around, 
By the way, I'm using the center mouse button um, held down to get the orbit. And I'm just taking the cursor to there, you'll say on the face, click E cut. So I am cutting through the wall. So that's useful. So think of something a bit more advanced. This might take a little more time to do, so bear with me. What about a curved surface? So I've just made a little, little pillar here, it's quite easy. And I'm going to enter love and put this as 0.6 meters. Now that text is far too small for you to read, so I'm going to take the scale tool and just do this. So you can see that um, it hasn't curved it on, it's just stuck it on, which is not really any use. So what we're going to do is we've got an object here, we can use this. So camera, done the views top. And you can see that if you go to the, that view, it's just kind of stuck it, which is not particularly useful. So I'm going to delete that one. And I set another one, and yeah, we'll keep it that length. Actually, it's quite useful. So, sort of love, but I want it to be bigger. It's been a bit too small recently. 0 0.8 meters. Okay. Place. So, it's there. We need to rotate it now because there's no straight angles in there which we can use. I'm going to cheat with rotation because everything's relative. If I draw a box here and select that, but use this box as a rotational um, tool and go 90, I can rotate it exactly the way I want it to be. So that's kind of useful. I select him, use scale to make him bigger. That's a good size. And if you go to camera view, standard views top. We'll see it's nicely in line there. Send the views front. We see the word love. And again, just make sure everything stays relative and we can actually control this. If we select that move relative to points in the box, it actually becomes slightly easier to control. See? And we wanted to move it in the green direction first. Okay. We want to move it in the red direction. Camera standard views top. We can move it here. And we're trying to get it so it actually intersects with our item. There we have it, it's now intersecting. How far can we pull it? And so it looks a bit too low, so I'm going to try and pull it up in the blue direction. Again, it takes a little bit of time getting used to the way that it now snaps. And that's kind of good. So what we have here is the word love down there. So that's kind of cool. But that doesn't look very good because it's just kind of coming out. And actually, look, it's not fully in there, so it's moving a little bit. In the green direction. A bit less. Okay, so it's now fully in there. Great. So we've got that, but if that's what you want, then that's good, but it might not be. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this curved. So camera standard views bottom. We've got to draw a circle which is just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to say that is going to be um, 10 centimeters. Okay. So it's quite actually a small area, but that's fine. I'm going to place my origin there, go out to 10 centimeter point. And go out and make this, doesn't matter how big. So I've drawn two extra circles, which is basically this big circle here, and this is the one which is extruded up, a gap, and a big circle area. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to t 
take this bit and delete it. So we now have a halo hovering around. Okay. Selecting that face. Oh, that box there, I can remove him. Select this guy. Move. We move him down, down in the blue direction. There's a reason for this. Let's just delete the line there. So he's been moved exactly underneath. Take the pull tool and just pull him down into a sphere. This is very nice. I can now take this, select the whole thing. This is why I moved it down, because it's easier to select the whole thing. Make component, don't bother the name. Okay. So now we have this component, this, um, what's it called? This cylinder, and this. So first thing, take this component, and it exploded. So that is now bound down to its base components. Secondly, take this tube we just made, move this, need to move it up, which again, it's not basically always the easiest thing to do. But once you get the hang of it, you can just move. Okay. So slight mistake here, we see that the um, original bit, that's fine because it's already cut that profile. All you need to do is make sure is that the inside bit cuts. So that's great. So we can now take this, intersect faces with selection. Great. Take that cone and delete him. And see what happens here. We've got these cuts all the way around. So we can just take our tool and we can start removing everything which is not that cut. So I'm going to do the L because um, it's a nice easy shape to do. And you'll have to imagine that I'm doing the same with all the other letters. So there we are. We've just got the outside hollow shape. I can then take the pen tool. We know that our cylinder is vertical. So we can just take this and go, there's a point there on the left turn. There's a point there. Do we have any other points? We've got a point there. And we've got, let's see, a point there. Point there. Point there. So we kind of healed the surface and created a front. And you can go and do this round with all the other letters, and you end up with your words curved around your cylinder. And that is some basic tools you can use with lettering.